What's up, people? It's time for some more Kangen Omega. Kangen Omega, chapter 246, entitled All a Lie. Now, this is not going to be a reaction chapter. I couldn't wait. I had a longer uh, break uh, today and stuff, so I said, you know what? I'm just going to read the chapter. It's the aftermath, and I was right. It's an aftermath chapter, though still following the... I, I've seen some people call this the restaurant arc and stuff like that. Like, just because we have, like, six chapters in one place does not make it an arc. Even if you call it a mini arc, like, no, nah, no. Nah, I'm not prescribing to that. But I have seen it referred to as that. If you want to refer to it that, it's fine. I would call it the restaurant battle rather than arc myself. But, you know, you do you. Um, either way... Uh, I ended up making sure that I didn't read too far into the comments, though. I only read the ones there on the official translation and stuff. I didn't go on a Reddit or a Discord or anything like that. So I can keep my own thoughts here because... I like the chapter. Yep, I really do. We don't get full explanations on what went down in the explosion and stuff like that, but there are some key things to go over. So we're just going to scan through them. But let me know just right out of the gate. Initial reaction. Did you like the chapter? Because I like the chapter. I did. Um, is it the perfect chapter? The great chapter? No. But it's a good chapter. Um, either way, it just feels too damn short. That's my only real complaint. It's entitled All a Lie. And seriously, that, I, I got some questions. But either way, first and foremost, St. Goddamn's Hospital. St. Let me say that. St. Goddamn. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that one there. Anyways, moving on. That's a, And that's only the first panel of the first page, people. Um, but yeah, we see that... Uh, we see Yamagohan, Oma, and Ryuki running towards the hospital. We see Shion. I mean, if Kaede wasn't in this, then, I mean, we know who best girl is, right? Hatsumi's girlfriend is kind of best girl outside of Kaede. Kaede is, is number one. But still, still, there there is an argument to be made. Um, so Shion's there, so we see, and we see, of course, uh, what's her name, uh, Shun, Shunka, Shunka, yeah, um, I, I forget her first name or whatever, or her last name, however that works, but, uh, Shion, her assistant, whose name escapes me right now, uh, but she was always getting nosebleeds for the beautiful beast, and I mean, hubbada hubbada, who wouldn't, right? Um, but we see them all there, so we know instantly that this is... It's the hospital. Yeah, you know, like we, I mean, we already knew it was the hospital, but clearly, even before we see what's going on and what's happening, uh, we definitely notice that this is going to be about Setsune. He's clearly in bad shape. He's in surgery. He's something. Uh, I assumed Akoya was there as well, but apparently he's not. Um, funnily enough, we see Shion immediately said, Oh, for God's sake, I could use a goddamn smoke right now. And I'm like, uh, What's that inner yap? Yeah. I mean, I assume it's a, like, at first I was like, okay, maybe that's supposed to be a vape pen, because I don't see smoke coming from it or whatever. Um, I don't know what really vape pens look like, or what have you, like these e-cigarettes, vape pens, whatever, you know, all that garbage that people shouldn't be doing in the first place. Um, but, suffice it to say, like, if you're going to smoke, smoke, right? Uh, don't try to sugarcoat it, as far as I'm concerned, but... What, what what is that then? Is that is that what she's complaining about? Like she wants a real cigarette, but she can't smoke inside of a hospital. Is that is that what I'm gathering from this? Because what it looked like to me initially was one of those fancy holders, and she's she's a gazillionaire, so of course she would have one of those fancy you know like holders, like you know uh, that back in the day it used to be a lot longer and stuff, but it'd be like. It'd be the really creepy lady who was all wrinkles and too many diamonds and stuff and saggy tits from a like her eighties animated movie. She'd always be like a Cruella de Vil shit, you know what I mean? Like it was this goddamn long, but it was like the cigarette was at the very end. I assume it was like a shortened version of that and that thing's like gold plated or some shit. So I'm like, you have a cigarette in your yap. Is this supposed to be a joke? But then I thought it's got to be an e-cigarette, a vape, or some, something, one of those bullshit things. And even she's like, yeah, I could use a real smoke. Like, I, I, I don't like this half-measure bullshit. Um, you guys let me know if that's supposed to be a joke, uh, because she's already gotten a real cigarette in her yap, or is it supposed to be a reference to the fact that she can't smoke a real cigarette in a hospital? Because, oh yeah, all the other smoke is totally okay. 
Um, until 20 years later and we find out, yeah, no, that shit's killing us worse than uh, tobacco, so, and, and nicotine, whatever. You know, they'll figure that out after, you know, a couple million die from it or something. Um, anyway, so we see everybody there and they're just like, alright, I only brought Ryuki and Oma, obviously because Oma is involved, and Ryuki is involved, and Yama Gohan is the center to everything. He is the, he, you know, he is our king, right? He is amazing, but, uh... They, she did call them and blah 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 so they show up and said it's not looking good we see Setsuna he is like beaten a bloody he's on oxygen he's you know beep 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 all that shit right um and everyone's like wow like who could have done this how could this have happened um so they said they treated him incredibly quickly enough to save his life but they can't guarantee that he'll ever wake up so what they're basically saying he's immediately in a coma and I'm like alright Setsuna is alive but once again, I, I thought, and I said this before, is Setsuna, when we thought Setsuna was actually dead, right? Or there was a p potential for Setsuna to die. I said, even if they don't kill off the beautiful beast, he'll be in no condition to fight for at least a very long time. And maybe never be able to fight again. He might be permanently damaged by this fight. That's a possibility. And right now, they don't even know if he's going to wake up. Right now, he's in a coma. I mean, I assume that Tsuna will eventually wake up, but he might not be in any shape anymore. You know, like, his fights, fighting days might be over officially from the amount of accumulative damage he took in that fight, right? So, that's always a potential. So, this is where uh, Oma basically says thanks for bringing, you know, Setsuna here and stuff like that. And she basically says, yeah, no, uh... I was told the drop-off point for Setsuna uh, and transported him immediately to the hospital. It was Akoya who saved him, but Akoya is like, where's Akoya now? And she's like, I have no idea, actually. It's like, wait, what? You don't know where he is? And said, like, he's been unre- ever since this happened, he's been unreachable, hasn't shown up to work, he's basically disappeared. We have no idea. So this man is going to double down on his martial arts, and he is going to unleash, execute, justice! The man is going to execute some justice. What he's going to do, ladies and gentlemen, what Akoya is going to do, is he is going to wait for high noon, and then he is be going to become the epitome of invincibility known as the Justice. And he, when he does this, when he goes into this form, it will be the Invincible Principles, Pasha, pre-initiative, Forget about it. This man will show up with justice on his side. The ultimate form. Nico style shenanigans. The last core. Nah, 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 nah. None of this, guys, is going to matter when it comes to Okoya after his off screen training arc. And he becomes the one. And when people question when he comes back, Okoya can't defeat this character. He will just answer with. Who decided that? 100% Akoya stocks on the rise. We got stocks in this guy now. Um, that being said, uh, it, the conversation basically continues the way you would think. It's like, okay, how is Sitsuna doing? What basically happened? Well, they dropped him off, yada, yada, yada. And uh, she's got full confidence in Okoya, which a lot of people in the fan base should now do. I know a lot of people are going to turn head and, and say, I always believed in Okoya. He was always shit on by the fan base. Meanwhile, look at all their deleted comments from, you know. But either way, real uh, Kengan fans, not haters, but Kengan fans will recognize that, you know what, this this is fine. It's not like he one-upped really any of the, the strong, you know, the villains, the emperors of the series. He just managed to survive against the emperors of the series he got the drop on them and stuff it's like okay that's fair you know it's not like he did stuff that he shouldn't have been able to do so it's all good right and his reliance on tech and all this stuff has clearly diminished his own like that reaction time shit his ability all that you know his martial arts prowess right which we know he has so it's all good there so she ends up leaving and stuff, and Oma basically tries to give her a piece of advice, saying, look, Akoya is... I mean, ironically, Yamagohan's there, like, no, not Akoya, what could happen? It's like, you know he's kind of evil. Like, he wants to murder half of the Kengan Association. If not, 
99 percent of the of the damn uh, association if he had it his way he would kill all of you without a second thought like he's executing justice banish all evil he's very black and white in that regard but that being said that being said you know he's still like ah oh, man but Akoya you know been through some shit together so it's like ah shit right like lesser of two evils realistically right like the like the KVP tournament he was a lesser of two evils if he's on her side up against you know the the worm lesser of two evils again so it's all good but Oma of all people basically said you know the way things are going right now he's going to ruin himself he's taking things to an extreme that he's just not ready for you know he's trying to be Batman with no moral code and he's against people that just go beyond even even the Dark Knight you know what I mean it's basically what Oma is summarizing saying like he's gonna take you down with him like and we all like you know veterans of the first manga we all sort of semi care about each other to a degree we don't want to see any of you get hurt that's why you have Gohan's freaking out over Setsuna being hurt and Okoya being hurt even though and it's acknowledged later on it's acknowledged like Setsuna is not a good person neither is Okoya this is not good people but there's that camaraderie that's going on here and just basically says you know, maybe it's time you sort of cut ties with the guy. Like, he's kind of dangerous, and right now, even more so in the position he's in. And she basically says, I will follow Okoya to the very depths of hell. Like, there's nothing more I could ask for and stuff, of course, because she's got this... The I, I, Honestly, the, the uh, panel, the chapter, describes it better than I would have probably done. She's codependent. 100%, which is bad very very bad for all types of relationships it's okay to be if you were when people say independent or dependent or codependent right they use these for the extreme versions of a hundred percent but when you put a number on it like I hate the idea that you can't be codependent or dependent in a marriage that is what a marriage is supposed to be it is a dependent relationship it's just not one person is independent and the other person is 100% dependent. No, it's supposed to be a percentage. I, I'm not going to say what the perfect number is. I mean, in an ideal world, 50-50, but that ebbs and sways from week to week, day to day, year to year. But the idea is that that is what things are supposed to be. You know, that's how marriages are supposed to be. The idea that being codependent or dependent on someone in this day and age has lost its meaning the idea that people are supposed to be 100 I'm a strong independent you know whatever and I, I don't need you I don't need this I don't need that I don't need anybody is a very I'll use a you know a word that's been used toxic it's a super toxic extreme mindset and it should be abolished 100% just because you can survive on your own doesn't mean you should doesn't mean you want to being in a relationship or a marriage and not just marriages and romantic relationships but relationships with your siblings with your friends with your co-workers with you know all of these you should be able to rely on people relying is being dependent I should be able to rely on my co-worker to help me when I don't understand what I'm doing in my job I should be able to rely on my parents for an ear to talk to when I'm feeling down and can't talk to anybody else you should be friends family you should be able to do all this right so but what she's doing is literally the definition of today's where being codependent or dependent is an ugly word. It's a bad thing. You need to be a badass 100% independent man, woman, or whatever in between. You need to be that. She is literally the extreme version of that. That that is the definition of it today, you know, which is, no, that's a bad thing. Being 100%, and it's true, being 100% codependent on someone else is a bad thing you lose a certain level of your individuality you lose certain levels of these things so I guess I got a little technical and psychological with that shit there but I don't think I'm wrong about this is the idea that codependency is not bad she's taking it to the umph degree she's 100% she's not she's not an independent woman without a Koya she needs a Koya needing and wanting sort of different right so either way yeah, so Yamagohan just remarks, she's fully codependent, you know, and Ryuki even acknowledges, I used to be like that with Mukaku. Grandpa could do no wrong. He put me in chains and had, you know, and 
it shows a very great visual of the idea of him being chained, but his brain being acknowledged and chained. Like, not his physical self, not being physically chained, but mentally. Mentally chained down to the point that you blindly accept this as normal. There's nothing wrong with this. And we saw that evolution of Ryuki's character, and he stops thinking for himself. He only thinks about what would Grandpa say, what would Grandpa do, what would Grandpa... blah 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 blah, right? And that is exactly, and it's a very good comparison, good acknowledgement from Ryuki's part that shows growth, right? So there's a lot of good things there. Um, and says, like, we definitely need to help her out here. Like, this can't stand. And Yabu Gohan's the one to say, don't worry, like, I, I guess I'll try to talk to her and stuff. And if anybody can get through to her, it's the man, the myth, the legend, Yama goddamn Gohan. So I'm, I'm good with that. I'm 100% good uh, with how that all went down. Then... We, uh, we go back to Shion and the uh, the assistant, I can't think of her name, Nosebleed Girl. But, um, so, she basically says that she's going to stay here with Setsuna and that kind of idea. And uh, just, you know, keep monitoring him and blah blah blah. And she does mention, however, like, I share some of the blame of what, they actually acknowledge what happened in Ashura. And say, like, what he did on Gamryu Island was not okay and shit. It's like, this won't atone for it, but still, like... I, I, you know, I'm sorry that happened and stuff. I gotta take some responsibility for that. And this is where they, they mention, like, you know, he might have been having a psychotic break. And I love that they're chalking it up to a psychotic break, which it was. But he was still trying to kill people. And even, like, it's sort of like that whole what Big Mom said in One Piece. Even among the scum, even among all pirates, there is still a code. There is a level of honor amongst thieves, as they like to say. And so even though they were killing each other and there was no holds bars in the tournament, the fact is, is that he went on a killing spree in an unprovoked manner and all this stuff, right? So, yeah, yeah, he's like, he, so for a crazy person, a already crazy murderer is now having a psychotic break. That's just doubling down on insanity right there and stuff. And they, they're like, yeah, so we're, we can't excuse it even if he was, you know, having those problems. He still killed a lot of people and stuff, and uh, Oma remarks that Retsudo Wall is a complete professional, and he would never act out on a personal vendetta. As far as they're concerned, that's done and buried, you know, that's part of the life of being a bodyguard, part of the life of being like you accept the risks with the rewards of the job you've chosen, right? You've chosen to be a bodyguard, you have to accept some of the responsibilities of what that entails, right? So. In a professional sense, yes. Will he ever be friends with Setsuna? No. But is he going to act out of revenge? Very unlikely. No vendettas when it comes to the bodyguards, right? So that's what Oma sort of brings up and stuff. Uh, this is where Shion apparently went to the apartment that Setsuna was living in. Uh, due to Ryuki, like, telling, oh, this is where he lives and stuff. And went through all the stuff trying to find, you know, different clues and yada yada yada. Finds a notebook that basically summarizes, I think Yamagohan brings it up. It's a diary and a, uh, and like, a, a shopping list and a, you know, a memoir and just everything all in once. You know, it's, as Shion puts it, it's got huge ups and downs. And it's true. We see things called, like... A has called the worm this, the worm that, so when he meets up with Akoya and stuff, he's got false god written through it. He's got some symbol with all the eyes and the triangle, like a Illuminati level shit, like some uh, grotesque something out of Final Fantasy, you know, or, or Digimon, you know. Uh, things showing up there. Multiple eyes inside of a pyramid shit, as I said, Illuminati shit. Uh, remarking that... Uh, how Ryuki had brilliant talent and stuff, and it's funny because he says, "Is this how he saw me?" And it's like, that's a good you like the way he says it and the way his expression is is almost like, "This is what Setsuna saw me." Like it's a bad thing. It's like he was praising him. The only thing we saw was it's like he's learned the basics of the Koi style. He's even more brilliant. He's picking it up faster than me. You know what a boon. Like what a great. You know what a talent. You know he's only complimenting him. I didn't see anything like twisted about it. And he's still, like, sort of disturbed by how Setsuna viewed him. But I didn't see anything there, so that was kind of weird. And that that line, I think, like, really strong. I'm tired. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we're now seeing the full force, the full amount of the mental illness going on with Setsuna. Because we know he's very heavily mentally ill. With a lot to diagnose there that I'm not even going to attempt to without a couple of degrees. But... Yeah, he's definitely tired and stuff like that. And it's, and it's quite sad to see that, you know, because 
regardless how you feel about the character, it's like, yeah, one day, like, I'm tired. It's like, yeah, he's tired of being, like, generally speaking, I would argue, crazy people who know they're crazy don't want to be crazy, you know? Or people who are mentally ill who have those moments, or people like with dementia, I know this from dealing with my uncle and stuff, when he would have his bouts of dementia, he'd, of course, not be the greatest person and when he would come back, he would just be so depressed. He's like, I don't want to be like that. Why? And it just randomly happens. He forgets who he is. He gets angry. He forgets where he is and stuff. And then when he remembers his dementia episode, there would be a perfect summary to say, I'm just tired of this. Like, like I don't want to go through that, you know? And so, yeah, I, I can definitely see that. Um, they try to break it all down and things like that. But finally, Oma opens up to... Uh, page about halfway through and he says what the hell does this mean and right there as I said he, he was all over the map he's writing soy sauce paper towels and stuff all from the store oh there's a BOGO here and stuff but right there in big bold letters they lied to me the tiger's vessel is Shen Wulong it was all a lie okay we have some questions and I can't men answer any of them they lied to me who's they it was all a lie. What was all a lie? And the tiger's vessel, which we still don't know what it is. A lot of people have assumed the one to take on the title of the master of the Nico style. But we don't know what the tiger's vessel is. We actually don't know because, it, remember, it is a fan-given name, Tiger Nico. The tiger's vessel might have some connection to Tiger Nico, but it's not all his plan. There could be a greater thing at work. We make assumptions based on a fan given name, Tiger Nico. So, what is the Tiger's Vessel truly, and why is it Shen Wulong? What does that mean? He's already the connector, is the connector, so that means the connector and the Tiger Vessel, is it the same? Is it another name for the connector? Is it different? And why is Shen Wulong the Tiger's Vessel? What is the Tiger's Vessel? And who lied to Setsuna? A lot there. A lot there going down. Um, at the very end of the chapter, we go back to uh, like the Clinton Hotel or whatever. Shen's just watching a real a reject version of Friday the Thirteenth, while Yan is pretending, pretending to be intimidating, pretending to be the guy, the man. Like, and I love. Gilbert's reaction immediately like, huh? Because he basically says he's got his old dark aura like, we were supposed to lay low. If you have an explanation, you better say it now. And we see there's Tiger, who looks a little worse for wear. Gilbert looks fine. Willem looks like he took a good shot to the damn chin, or at least the cheek there. Um, so Akoya straight up like, Punched this guy. Countered his uh, rider punch and punched him right out, apparently. Or long enough that he could, you know, comatose him for a few seconds. Um, either way, Willem and Tiger remain completely neutral on the stance. But Gilbert's like, huh? Who, like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? And I'm like, yeah, okay, here's the deal. Yen might be the leader of the worm. It's Shen, but it's Yan. Okay, find him. But, and he might be super strong. We never actually seen him fight. We know he can handle himself very well. It would be easy to just assume he's just an S-tier fighter, right? That only S-tiers in the Kangen Association will be able to beat Yan. Guys like Agito, Oma, Ryan, Roland, you know... Kuroki and stuff, that only they could beat Yan, right? We can assume that only S tiers can take on Yan. Fine, so we put him in S. But where do you rank these three? Seriously. And I would instantly put Gilbert above. I'm putting Gilbert immediately, like, in, once again, this is all speculation, right? Because we haven't seen. But would. Who among any of you is ranking Yan? First off, above any of these three individually, and let me know your placement, but does anybody actually rank Yan above Tiger, Gilbert, and Willem? All three of them. He can beat them all one-on-one. -on -one. And if you do, 
What makes you think that even if he could do that, which I don't know anybody who honestly puts Yan above Gilbert or Tiger, but if you do, and you say it's a 50-50 fight, okay, he cannot beat these three up, and Willem is immediately going to side with Gilbert over Yan or anybody else, so it's going to be 2v1 at the very least against Yan. And unless Shen saves Yan's ass, who the fuck does he think he is? That's all I got to say about that end part. Like, seriously. Like, who does he think he is? You know what I'm saying? But that's the chapter. Uh, I am looking forward to the next one, but I like the chapter. I liked it for a lot of reasons. Um, as I already stated, I, you know, I like this psychology aspect of how mentally ill Setsuna actually is. The very poor, the codependency relationship that Akoya has uh, with, with um, what is her name? Uh, Shunka. And... Uh, and the relationship with Ryuki and Satsuna and stuff like that. All that stuff was very interesting, how Shion sort of feels bad, like, I was the one to bring Satsuna to the island, I was the one who hired him, all this stuff. We don't know where Akoya is, we know Satsuna's condition. Yan trying to be intimidating, you know, dressed like a, you know, Indian dancer or some shit. Um, but anyways, yeah, no, I just... I, I thought there was a lot to the chapter that was interesting, and what the hell, who lied to Satsuna, and what is the Tiger's Vessel? And why is it Shen Wulong? What did Setsuna figure out? And of course he's in a coma, so we will not know. But anyways, I know that was a bit of a lengthy review, ladies and gentlemen, but I, I liked it. I really liked it and I wanted to talk about each thing that went down. Uh, sort of like a page-by-page -page analysis review rather than just a, I like the chapter, they fought, yeah, this is a cool panel, see you back here next week. No, I wanted to actually sink my teeth into it. I really did. So I'm glad I did. Hope you guys enjoyed the review and it wasn't too wordy and lengthy for you. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to talk about that shit. So anyways, that's it for me, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always. And we'll see you guys back here next time for more Kangen Omega. Looking forward to it. Chapter 247 should be a good one. I don't know what it's going to pertain to, but it should be good and I'm excited. So... Let me know what you guys thought. We'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.